Welcome to Caillou Conversation and we are on a journey to learn about the Holy Spirit. We want to host him as never before and so we welcome those that are gathering now. Um, you can still call your friends and tell them to join you tonight as together we're taking a journey to host the Holy Spirit, to understand, to be aware and to experience. And so remember to like, remember to share, remember to subscribe. As a matter of fact, you can start a watch party now and invite your friends because together we're going to share this good news. Jesus calls it the good news. The Bible calls it the good news. The disciples call it the good news. And so tonight we're talking about the Holy Spirit, our helper. And this is a message we started last week. And so today we're talking about the Holy Spirit, our helper. We will be sharing in, 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 in a few weeks about hosting the Holy Spirit. And if we host the Holy Spirit, we have to know how to treat him. And we have to know what is the win-win relationship with you being with the Holy Spirit and he being in you. And so we read from John 14, 26. And so get your Bibles ready and get your pen ready to write down and also make sure you make your comments because we want to, to read with an interaction. We welcome Lorraine and Antoinette and Zamal and Philroy and Glenda. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Caillou Conversation. It is so good that you're joining and I, and I, I want us to commit to each other that we are going to inspire each other, we're going to motivate each other to go greater and greater and greater. I don't know about you, but I want to know God more. And to know God more is to know the Holy Spirit and how He works in us and, and how He is in us. And sometimes He's so silent that we forget that we are God carriers. God is in us. The Holy Spirit is in us. And so in John 14, 26, Jesus speaking to the disciples, he's told them that he was about to leave them. And he, 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 they said, don't go. We, how are you going to leave us? Where are you going? He says, I'll go and prepare a place for you. And where I am, you will be. And Thomas, being one of the bright ones, says, how do we know where you're going? We don't know the way. And then Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he said, their disciples are thinking, this is so difficult to understand. But tonight, he is our helper. And I want to show you how he helps you in your life. Because if you are in something tonight that is not that you cannot do by yourself, if you are in something that is just too hard for you, you need a helper. And God can be your helper. So Jesus describing the Holy Spirit in John 14, 26, he says, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit. So he calls him counselor. And that word counselor in the Greek is a compound word. It means counselor, it means helper, it means comforter, it means an advocate, it means an intercessor, a strengthener, someone who even your standby. When you are finished and your strength is finished, he comes and he continues the work if you get to, when you get tired. So he says, when the counsel of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Wow, I just love the unity of God. Father, working to exalt Jesus. Holy Spirit, working to exalt and empower Jesus. And Jesus, worshiping the Father, exalting the Father. I mean, God just pressing through for his purpose in you and I and in the world. And so Jesus says, the Father will send the Holy Spirit in my name and he will teach you all things. So the Holy Spirit is a teacher as well. And he will remind you of everything I have said, which means that the Holy Spirit will even affect your brain power. And that's something that I'm excited about because, you know, in this crisis that we're going through, one of the attacks of the COVID-19 is your mind, is your will, is your emotion, is your meditation, is, is, is your imagination. And so a lot of people are saying, you know, I'm, I'm getting spooky, spooky things are happening, especially in the night when the fever is burning, you know, I'm, I'm delirious, etc., etc. So we have to preserve our minds. 
And so the Holy Spirit is a teacher. So he is a helper. So tonight we're going to focus on him being our helper. How does he help? Well, he helped by counseling us. He helped by guiding us. He helps by giving us understanding. Because there's another section in the Bible that says the, Bi the Holy Spirit gives us understanding. And he also helps us by strengthening in us. And you know, sometimes you get weak. Sometimes you just can't handle it anymore. And you, in the physical, it is over. And then the Holy Spirit comes and he says, that's when you need me. I am your helper. Now notice the word helper, because a helper is a person that assists you. They support you. They do not do all the work for you. And that is very important because sometimes Christians, you know, they said, oh, I'm walking by faith, I'm living by faith, and they just expect God to do everything. No, faith without works is dead. And so he's our helper, meaning he will assist us, we do our part, he does our, his part, and then we accomplish ourselves. And we want to welcome Lillian and Tania, Francine and Keisha, we welcome you, and when you're writing, tell us where you're from, because we always love to hear about the different nations that are gathering. And remember, keep the comments going, because we're talking about the Holy Spirit helping us. Testimony, I want to hear from you, and if you have prayer requests, we want to hear from you. This is a conversation. The conversation is between myself and you. You are my special guest. And so let's look in a story in the Bible where the Holy Spirit shows himself as a great helper. And the story is found in Mark chapter 5, to 31. Jesus was on his way to do a miracle. A man had asked him about coming to heal his daughter. And he was on his way with the father to do the miracle on his daughter and a large crowd followed and was pressing around him. Now you can imagine that Jesus is surrounded with his disciples, which is like bodyguards, and then there's a thousands of people around him, and here is a woman that's gonna try to meet with Jesus. You know that is almost impossible. And when you hear about this woman, you're going to know why it is even, even more greatly impossible. The Bible says this woman that was there, she was bleeding for 12 years. So this woman had a disease that was making her bleed for 12 years. And I don't know what that is. It sounds like some form of cancer or something. But anyway, it was a dangerous disease. And for you to bleed for 12 years, you are not a strong woman. You would have been weakened. You would have been losing weight. It would affect other areas of your health as well because you're losing blood. And so the woman, look at the situation. Jesus was there. Crowds were there. She spent all the money she had. She had no more money. And so she, instead of getting better, she grew worse. And so this was a difficult situation. This woman needed a helper. She had no more money. And sometimes when you have no money, you have no friends. And it did not say that family came with her and tried to help her. She was alone. And so the only person that was there to help her was God. And God came through. And so I'm here to tell you, whatever it is you are believing for tonight, when you host the Holy Spirit, he will be your helper. And we continue to welcome Patrick and Susan Toledo from across Canada and Yvonne and Jolene from California and Donnell and Margo. Welcome, because we are talking tonight about hosting the Holy Spirit as our helper. And if you need help, thank God you're here tonight because I'm going to teach you how to activate the help of the Holy Spirit. So this woman, for those that are just coming, she was bleeding for 12 years. She spent all her money so she can't go back to any doctor and she has tried doctors upon doctors upon doctors and it couldn't heal her. 
And so now she saw Jesus, she heard about him, and so now the crowd is there, but this woman, she's getting worse. So the Bible says when she heard about Jesus, she decided to do something. So she heard about Jesus. She must have heard him teaching and saw the crowd gathering around him. And the Holy Spirit saw a woman that was ready for change. Let me ask you tonight, are you ready to shift? And are you ready to lift? Write that down, shift and lift. Because that is a corporate term that they're using a lot in companies now. They're looking at how they need to shift and lift. Because, you know, in the 21st century, you know, a lot of technologies are happening. And so they are replacing people with technology and they're getting out. You can't be at your workplace, so you're working from home. So you have to shift in the way you do things and you have to lift meaning you have to grow into another realm to be in another position for prosperity in spite of what season you're in. So this woman, she made a decision. She heard about him and the Bible, and, and, and I'm just excited about that because Jesus is there preaching, but the Holy Spirit saw an opportunity to bring glory to Jesus to help a desperate woman and to let the whole crowd know that Jesus is healer and helper. This is so exciting. So the Bible says when she heard him, she came up behind him, the, came up in the crowd. She didn't go in front of him. She didn't kneel down in front of him. She only touched the cloak. What did the Holy Spirit do? He's the helper. And what did I say helper is? Counselor. He will tell you the why, the where, and the how to do it. Because she had to be wise. In that culture, you're not supposed to touch a man that is not your husband. And in some places, they didn't even touch the women when they are out and out of the home. So even in the synagogues, the women would sit on one side and the men would sit on one side. So the Holy Spirit, who is a counselor, had to guide her. How do you safely get your miracle? You know, this is so powerful because sometimes as Christians, we have the faith, but we don't have the wisdom. And this is why the Holy Spirit wants to help us. We just don't want to go on blind faith. We want to make sure we have faith, but we want to of making sure the wisdom factor. How do we do it? When do we do it? Where do we do it? With whom do we do it? Why do we do it? Because this is very critical. If she had run up in zeal, hallelujah, 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 and run towards him and grab him and hug him, it would have been dangerous. She could have been stoned. So the Holy Spirit helps us with counsel. He helps us with understanding. He helps us with wisdom, which is the very principal thing. The Bible says with all you're getting, get wisdom. And so the Holy Spirit helps us with wisdom. Wisdom is to know what to do and to do the right thing in the right way with the right person at the right time for the right result. And this woman was helped by God counseling her. So she came up behind him. People are staring at him. They're not looking behind him. So she went behind him out of the view of anyone. And then she touched the cloak of his garment. And she thought, if I touch his clothes, I will be healed. Wow. This is a woman who is creating her miracle. This is a woman who had the faith to believe that he is so powerful that he doesn't even have to lay hands on me. I will touch the cloak, not his feet as, a, as other women have done, bathe his feet. No, just the hem of his garment. She said that in her faith, if I just touch that, I will be healed. She made a decision. I am getting my healing tonight. I am getting my healing today. People of God, right where you are, you can make a decision. I will get my healing before this Kyle conversation is over. 
And if, 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 if I'm writing and I'm missing anything, I'm going to look at it again and I'm going to make sure I understand the principles so that I can get my healing. And so she decided and worked her faith for her miracle and even choose how she's going to do it. Counsel. The Holy Spirit is a counselor. The Holy Spirit is a helper. The Holy Spirit is a strengthener. How did that woman press through thousands of people after bleeding for 12 years? She must have had a strengthener. He is a strengthener. He must have given her strength. So you see the way in which he's assisting. He is counseling her how to do it. He is strengthening her. You can imagine the Holy Spirit as, a, as an in-house guide, as a, as a spirit that comes upon her and she's pressing through. She probably was just kneeling through and crawling through the crowds. And there are times when she had to stop and take a breath because she was so weak, people of God, 12 years bleeding. This woman is not Samson. <laughs> this woman is not, you know, a, a, a professional tennis player. So she must have been weak, but the Holy Spirit is a strengthener because when he decides to help you, if you need the wisdom, he will give it to you. If you need the counsel, he's given, he will give it to you. If you need strength, he will give it to you. And this woman got the strength to press through the crowd and touch the hem of his garment just as she said. People, the Holy Spirit, the helper. I want you to think of the way in which you need help tonight. Do you need more strength? Are you making a decision that you need wisdom for? What, what, what is it that you need? Because you remember, you have to do your part. You know, if you're looking for a job or anything, you have to do your research, you have to do all kinds of things, and then he does his part. If you're taking an exam, you have to study, then he brings the remembrance to you. So he's a helper. He's not just going to work for you. He wants to assist you. He wants to help you. He wants to guide you. He wants to counsel you. When the student is ready, the teacher appears. And so the Holy Spirit strengthened this lady and she reached out and touched him. Verse 30, it says, at once when this woman touched the hem of his garment in the middle of the crowd, Jesus realized that power had gone out of him. What kind of a touch? Because we need to understand the kind of touch. We have touched people, nothing happened. The disciples were touching him, nothing happened. Crowds were touching him, nothing happened. This one woman touched him, something happened. Power came out of him. This woman knew a special kind of touch, people. It's a touch of faith. Other people are looking at him. Other people are hearing. And oh yes, it sounds so good. It sounds so good. But this woman, no. This is for me. I am going to touch him with faith. I'm going to believe in him. And when I touch the garment, I'm going to expect that the power of God is going to leave him, come to me. And I'm not leaving this place again the same. A touch of faith. What kind of touch you have for God tonight? What kind of faith you have tonight? Do you need counsel? Do you need wisdom? Do you need strength tonight? And so it, and he turned around in the crowd and he asked, who touched my clothes? The clothes. <laughs> who touched? And he's looking around, you know, at, at all the, the people around. So the disciple says, come on, Jesus, be reasonable. You see the people crowding around you. Uh, and you're going to ask who touched me? Hundreds of people have been touching you. He said, no, somebody touched me and pulled virtue. Somebody touched me and pulled strength. Somebody touched me and pulled a miracle. Who could it be that know that God can heal in this great way? Who could it be that could have gotten the strength to press through this crowd? How, who could it be that passed Peter, James, and John, my zealot disciples? Who could it be that pulled a miracle right under the nose of thousands of people waiting? And this woman never waited. This woman never asked. She worked her faith 
and the Holy Spirit worked the miracle. That's why he is called helper. He helps you. She work her faith. He works the miracle. She step out. He gives her strength. She decide in her mind. He gives her wisdom. How to do it. She think it through. Just touch the hem. Just touch the hem. Do not touch the waist. Do not put your hands far than the man's ankle. Make sure, make sure everything is done properly. Make sure everything is done decently. The counselor was there. Oh, people, there's a counselor living in you. If you're a child of God, there is a counselor living in you. And if you will open your ears so that you can hear, you will hear him speaking. But sometimes we can't hear him because we're used to the shouting. But he doesn't shout. He's talking with you. He's gentle. It's counsel, not screaming. And if we listen to the counsel, then we will be successful. And so who touched me? And finally, fearfully, because she thought, oh my God, I'm going to get into trouble. But Jesus kept looking around. I want to know which person on earth had this kind of a faith. I, I, I want to know who is it. It would be so great if it's one of my disciples, but it wasn't one of his disciples. So then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, she just came and just fell at his feet. So in other words, by then she was crawling away because she didn't want to be seen or known because she's a woman. And because she was bleeding, she was stigmatized. She couldn't even go to the synagogue. So she came and she fell at his feet and she was trembling with fear and she told him the whole truth, thinking that they're going to stone her, thinking that he's going to be angry, thinking that I shouldn't have done it, I should have asked permission. But he said to her daughter, oh my Lord, he didn't say to her woman. It's amazing. You know, Jesus is very intentional in what he says and very intentional in what he does. He says, daughter, your faith has healed you. He didn't say my power has healed you, but your faith that, that came up and touched me believing has pulled virtue from me. You're healed because of your faith. I am powerful. I can do all things. The Holy Spirit is here. He can do all things, but God needs your faith to help you to perform as you believe. And he said to her, go in peace. The word peace there is another compound word, like the word that, that, that we talk about, the counselor. It means prosperity, it means well-being, it means whole, it means in your right mind, it means calm, it means strength. He says, go in peace and be freed from your suffering. Jesus says, he whom the Son set free is free indeed. This woman was free, but free indeed. Because she got her healing, she stopped bleeding. She, her shame was gone, she was free indeed. The people didn't stone her, she was free indeed. God exalted her publicly, she was free indeed. And all the pain disappeared she was free indeed. People of God, the Holy Spirit is your helper. And if you are a believer in Christ, he comes not only to visit you, but to live in you, which means you're hosting him on the inside. He is abiding with you, in you, and he says he will never leave you and he will never forsake you. So now we need to know how to do your part so that he can do his part. Whatever practical you need to do, do it. When you can't do anymore, he comes in. He is your helper. When he sees your faith, he releases his power. When he sees your actions, he gives you counsel, he gives you comfort, and he gives you strength. The Holy Spirit is your helper. I want to pray for you tonight. I want to agree with you tonight for whatever you're believing for because the Holy Spirit is there to come 
and to help you, to strengthen you, to guide you, to give you wisdom. He is your helper. So Father, I just pray for everyone that is on this conversation tonight. I thank you, Lord, that you have sent the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus, that we can host him and that he can be our helper. He can be our guide. He can be our counsel. He will give us the right way to do the right thing at the right time with the right person. Oh, Lord God Almighty, we give you praise. Oh, Lord God Almighty, we give you power. We give you help. We give you glory. Nothing is impossible with you. And so your people are in need in the middle of this COVID-19 crisis. If there's ever a time that people need help is now. And Lord God, we have a helper. His name is the Holy Spirit. He is a person. He is power. He is peace. He is strength. He's a counselor. He's an advocate. He's a guide. He's a strengthener. He's a teacher. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you, God. And we host you in our heart that we will never be alone. Well, keep writing and let me know what you're thinking and how I can pray with you. And remember, please help me. Help me to make this work globally. Like, share, subscribe, find 10 friends and tell them to go to Pat Francis Ministries, Facebook, like, share, subscribe, find 10 people who will help me to get these videos out. People are hurting. People are hurting. They need to know the power of the Holy Spirit. Christians are hurting. They need to know the power of the Holy Spirit. So, so 10 friends, who is it that has, has never watched? I want every one of us to find 10 friends and say, go now and like. Go now, share, 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 and subscribe. So that anytime we're doing, anytime I come on live, you will get a notification. I might just decide, you know what, I want to just do a teaching now. I really feel that I need to share with someone that needs to know. Someone need comfort. And I could come on and you will get the notification that I am on live. And you can meet me anytime, anywhere. So don't forget to subscribe. And God bless you. We love you. Thank you for joining me. And remember, we are a Kyle generation.